Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. And tonight marks a very special occasion. Tonight, I bring you Full Moon Matinee's first ever double feature. <laughs> yes, and both films are starring Peter Lorre. Now, both of these films, he's playing the lead character, Mr. Moto, and that is from the Mr. Moto franchise. Uh, it was a series of eight films that were done from 1937 to 1939. Now, this film series was based on a series of adventure novels that were written by John P. Marcand, and uh, Mr. Moto was a recurring character throughout the novels uh, as a Japanese secret agent slash detective. And he created, now the funny thing is, he created the character for the Saturday Evening Post. They were seeking new stories uh, with an Asian hero uh, after the death of Earl Biggers, who was the creator of Charlie Chan. Now, these films, uh, and this is my sensitivity disclaimer, it was very common in this era uh, to cast white Caucasians playing the roles of minorities. Uh, we've all heard the term blackface, uh, where someone puts on the makeup and dresses like and impersonates black people, say like in minstrel shows. There was also the term yellow face, which really was the same principle, but it involved impersonating Asians. Now, that would be very impolitic to do today. You know, sensitivities, what they are. But this was a different time and a different era. So I will ask for your understanding and that you can hopefully just treat it as a history lesson. Now, the reason they cast Peter Lorre I guess 20th Century Fox, and that was the that that was the studio that made the films. They must have felt Peter Lorre at least looked foreign enough, and with his accent, which first of all was a Hungarian accent, but they must have thought, well, it's an accent, sounds foreign enough. Uh, they felt that they could cast him in this role. Now. Something to note, both of these films are just a shade over an hour each, you know, so they're very short. Now, back then, because they were so short, they were probably paired with another film of similar length and bundled as a double feature back then. And for all I know, both of these films I'm bringing tonight may have been bundled together as a double feature then, just as I'm bringing them to you now. Now, because I'm showing two pictures, you know, this is going to be a longer night. Yeah, I know each one's only an hour, but it's still two pictures. Because of that, I am going to forego my customary intermissions in the middle of the movies. You know, this is already going to be a little longer. Now, I'll come on in between them, you know, just to segue from the first movie to the second. But otherwise, no intermissions in the middle of the movies. I'm just going to run them both. Just run them straight through. Now, this first picture, this was the first film in the franchise. Think fast, Mr. Moto. The second film is the second movie in the franchise. Thank you, Mr. Moto. And uh, both of these films were from the same year, 1937. So, to start it off, for the first picture from 1937, think fast, Mr. Moto. Let's roll the picture.
I told you to get out of here. You can't sell goods without a license. Thousand pardons, thousand pardons. Permit me to wish you good night. Au revoir. Good Something in your window attracted my attention. A silk hanging, it bears the design of a tiger. That's not for sale. We are not open for business tonight. But perhaps I may sell you something. Observe this handwoven rug. Excellent bargain. I don't need anything. Get out. <laughs> I have other treasures to show you. Treasures are not sold by street peddlers. Perhaps not. They have the proper setting. Might this be of interest? I tell you, I don't want to buy anything. I'm overstocked. But you haven't seen Kwan in secret. Stone from the Romanov collection. Newly arrived. Is it not worth your attention? We shall see. How much are you asking? Oh, it is easily worth 20,000, but you may have it for five. I'll give you two. Oh, no, 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 I must refuse your offer. The gem is worth ten times that much. Oh, how clumsy of me. I dropped the head of Kwan Yin. Is it not a perfect stone? Mm, fair. I can offer four. That's my limit. Very well. I am a poor peddler. I take it. Your door is unlocked. Just so I tell you. Oh, so it's you again. Is he trying to sell you anything? Only a rug. I told him not to bother me. My shop is closed. Didn't I warn you? I'm getting sick and tired of you guys without a license. Now, this time I'm going to turn you in. Now, come on. <laughs>
Hello, please. The heating slab. Hello, at what time tonight does your ship, the Marco Polo, sail for the Orient? At midnight, also? I would like to reserve a stateroom. Alone, please, yes. The name is Moto. M-O-T-O. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Stateroom, sir, and the best of the lot it is, if I may say so. You might say so, Jeeves. Come on, what's your name? Begging your pardon, sir. Quiet! Somebody's waiting for you in there. Oh, you don't say, Shifri. It's your father, sir. Oh. Are you by any chance the same Hitchings that owns this line? That's right, his old man is a Hitchings Post line. Let's serenade it. <laughs> it won't be necessary. Oh, hello, Dad. I didn't think you were going to see me off. Bob, if your friends will excuse you. I'd like to see you for a minute before you sail. Oh, sure. Wait here, people. Don't go away. Come on, let's take it. Captain Marshall of this ship called me tonight to discuss a matter of considerable importance. It must have been considerable to keep you up this late. Say, you seem to have been given quite a send-off. You better sit down. I want you to concentrate. Thanks. I'm sorry, sir. That's all right, son. Just don't make a habit of it. Yes, sir. Huh? I mean, no, sir. You know, I'm counting on you to put some new life into the export business. Aren't you afraid to trust me after the way I flopped here? Not a bit. You're a hitchings. You're bound to make good if you try. All you need is a complete change of atmosphere. New surroundings. New, uh, companions. Yes, sir. I've, uh... I've written a letter to Wilkie, our branch manager in Shanghai. I want you to give it to him personally. It's very important and extremely confidential. I wouldn't leave it around in my stateroom. You can't tell who your fellow passengers may be. You'll like Wilkie. He's been representing us in the Far East for years. You put yourself under his wing and you'll be all right. Well, goodbye, son. Let me hear from you once in a while. I will. So long, Dad. Don't worry about me. I never did. Good luck. See that he sails without falling overboard. Good luck. Don't worry. Good guy, my father. Come on in with that champagne. Come on, Jack. This way, sir. Your stateroom, sir. And the best of the lot it is, if I may say so. I'm Carson, your room steward, sir. Anything you want, just ring. Thank you. You feel very happy, my neighbors, don't they? It's Mr. Hitchings. His father owns the line. Oh. Hey, Stuart, bring some wine glasses. Excuse me. You understand, sir? His father and all that? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I wish I could, but I've given strict instructions to the chief steward to surround my cabin with pretty girls. <laughs> and look what I get. Hey, get who lives next door. <laughs> Excuse me, please. I think you've made a mistake. Come on, be a sport. I won't bother the whole ship, maybe. I don't know you. Well, that's all right. We're broad-minded. We don't mind a bit. Please, this is most embarrassing. Oh, you don't want to meet us, eh? Giving us that Oh, lay off you, Franz. Excuse them, will you? They're really good company when they're sober. Come on, have a drink with us. Another time, please. Ah, but this is very special champagne. Good night. Oh, I told you he was high hat. Come on, just one. It isn't every night I sail for China. I'm afraid you'll have to hurry, sir. The ship's due to sail any moment now. Well, let's see you. Captain, he's got some stores on board. Do the ladies. Let's hope there's some attractive ones on board. If there are, you'll find them, Bobby. Gingerbread. <laughs> oh, 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 what are you so noisy about? Come on. Oh, I'm thinking about the proverb of my country. Half the world spends its time laughing at the other half. And both are fools. Oh, not bad at all. You can't tell anything by appearances, can you? Shake. I choose my friends. Please. Oh, come on. I said shake. It's an old American custom. <laughs> oh! hey, wait a minute. You can't do... Oh! That's an old Japanese custom. Fun. Do that to me. 
you would. Well, sir, it is right. We asked for it. Now we're friends. Oh, uh, my name is Hitchings. Bob to you. So pleased. I'm Mr. Moto. Folks, this is Mr. Moto. Mr. Moto, this is Folks. I'm sorry you're not a dazzling blonde. I remember once on a trip through the canal. Your guest will sleep, sir. Ship ready to sail. Oh, Hurry. Good well, morning, Come on, please. Oh, oh, there's no time. Come on, everybody. Oh, oh, this way. Oh, this way. Come on, just a minute. Just a minute. Are you familiar with old Japanese customs? No, sir. I don't know a thing about them. Good. Say, how about ordering up a flock of drinks? No, thanks. I think not. Good night. Phew, it's hot in here. I think I'll take a shower. Shower? What's the matter? May I suggest you go to bed now, huh? Without my bath? Yes. You see, wine does not mix with soft water. Thanks. Mr. Moto, you'd make a swell valet. Yes, yes. Sing song, sing song. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hitchens is off to shank. Hi, sing, sing. Good night. Sleep tight. Now I know who you are. You're the Japanese Sandman. Strange people, these Americans. Well, we're on our way at last, sir. Yes. We got a fog tonight. Reminds me of London today. Would you please close that ventilator? It's cold in here. Anything else I can do, sir? That will be all for tonight, Carlson. Yes, sir. Take it away. May I? Yes. Mm. Excellent bouillon. Very good. Oh, so long. I wish that heathen would stop gallivanting around. He makes me feel worse. If we'd gone to the Grand Canyon like I wanted to, we wouldn't be seasick. Mr. Bob. Oh, do you have to be so cheerful? Oh, hello, it's Mr. Uh, now, don't tell me, Moto. You have a touch of the, what you Americans call the jitters this morning? I think I know what you mean. Come with me. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't believe that I know how to make a ha hacker dotty highball. I'll tell you how to make it. Don't bother, I won't live to drink it. Take that large glass. Yeah. First, a measure of lemon juice. Do you have salt? Surely. A pinch of salt. Now, one egg, if you please. Egg. And four dashes of orange bitters. Do you have Worcestershire sauce? <laughs> one jigger. And two teaspoons of sugar. Sugar? Yes. Yeah. Now a pony of absinthe. 
Uh, Arab, sir? Yes. This is uh, for you. And now? Gin. Yeah. Fill it up with gin. Gin? Yes, fill it up. <laughs> now, what do I do with it? <coughs> That's all. Just stir it. Gently, if you please. You wouldn't like a lily in it, would you? Won't be necessary. No. Drink it, Mr. Bob. Do I have to? It will improve the appearance of the world, I assure you. Drink it, please. I'm going to live. That's great stuff, Mr. Moto. Oh, so I'm glad. And what would you have, sir? A glass of milk for me, please. Milk. <laughs> You're a funny fellow, Mr. Moto. Please, what do you find funny about me? Well, last night you were a jiu-jitsu expert. Yes. And now today you're old Doc Moto, prescriber of the world's greatest hangover cure. Who are you, anyway? I'm Mr. Moto, importer of oriental goods, with a hobby for magic. Is that all? Observe. <laughs> Say, that's swell. What else can you do? Do you want me to begin at the beginning? <laughs> I wish you would. Too long. When there's a beginning, there's an end. Let's end at the beginning. Alpha, Omega. Alpha, Omega? In the words of Socrates, let each man help his brother man. <laughs> Stand for 34. Stand for 21. Unremember. <laughs> what do you know about that? Moto 21. Let's see. Oh, I remember reading about you. You broke a pole vault record, didn't you? Now I would only break the pole. <laughs> that calls for a real drink. Hey, bartender, what do you suggest? Oh, um, a Panther's Kiss. What's in it? Oh, Kula Hall. That's what you'll drink in Honolulu. going to be a dull crossing. Not a good-looking single girl on the ship and no sign of a female under 40 getting on board here. Beautiful girl is only confusing to a man. I could do with a little confusion. Life has been entirely too tame these last five days. Just look at our new ship, please. Yes, sir, we ought to be able to make a nice hook rug by the time we reach Yokohama. Observe. I take it all back. I'll give her four stars right now. Aloha, New York. Glad you got aboard. I've been waiting for you. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Oh, no, no, not yet. You're not supposed to toss that over until we pass. Well, how do you like that? Very much. The beautiful girl knows how to say no in a few words. <laughs> yes? I didn't order that, Stuart. No, miss. The young gentleman in the next stateroom sent it to you with his compliments. I don't know the young gentleman. May I wine you? P.S. I'd like to dine you. Robert Hitchings, Jr. Shall I open it now, miss? No, you may take it back. He seems quite a nice chap. His father owns the line. Take it back. And tell Mr. Hitchings, Jr., whose father owns the line, that I'm not in the habit of accepting gifts from strangers. Yes, miss. Come in. 
What? She sent it back? Yes, sir. Well, didn't she give you any message? Well, the lady said, begging your pardon, sir, that you don't accept gifts from strangers. And I thought formalities were forgotten at sea. When modern people cling to conventions, there's nearly always a purpose. Well, I suggest we cling to the bottle. Carson, fix three glasses. Yes, sir. I played very badly. Excuse me, please. Four sixes. Oh. To Miss Mystery. May we become better acquainted. Paul. Paul. Hello. I think your sight's a little off. Doing very nicely, thank you. <laughs> Do you realize you haven't told me anything about yourself? Our lives seem so different out here. It doesn't matter who we are ashore. Oh, I wish I could go on forever like this and never land anywhere. That's easy. I'll bribe the captain to cast us adrift on a raft. Oh, no. I mean, serious. This week at sea has given me something I thought I'd never know again. I feel like a child on my way to school. Pretty dingy and unpleasant school. Let's play hooky, then. That wouldn't be very helpful to either of us. After all, you have your business to attend to in Shanghai. Is Shanghai your destination or just a stopover? Uh, I have an uncle there. I'm on my way to visit him. You better make it a long visit because we're going to see a lot of each other. Are we? You don't think I'm going to lock myself up in an office all the time, do you? Perhaps you should for the good of the hitching blind. Since I met you, I've had an awful time thinking of anything else. What did you think about before, then? I can't remember. I, I must have thought of something. Anyhow, it doesn't make much difference now, does it? It's late. You better see me to my cabin, Bob. As you say. Enjoying the moonlight on the water, Mr. Carson? Very soothing to the nerves. Take two. Well, I'll bet the works, Mr. Marloff. Well, I will call you. Well, there's three janks and a couple of dames. <laughs> Just a moment. Three dames and a couple of jacks. That beats you. Hey, that makes five queens in the deck. You see? You were trying to cheat. Oh, boss, you know I wouldn't do that to you. Enough. It's all right. But don't let it happen again, Marks. I haven't drawn a full week's salary since I've been working for you. What's that? Let him in. Sheila, wait upside.
It's from the Marco Polo. The little lady? What'd she say? Read yourself. Cousin William completely recovered from illness. Don't worry any further. Love, Gloria. Hey, that don't make any sense. What does she mean? She means met young Hitchings as ordered. He is harmless. Uh, that's what I thought she said. We'll soon find out if he's harmless or very smart. The ship is due to arrive Friday. Meet you on the launch as usual. Okay, boss. I still can't figure it out. What? How those five queens got in the deck? And the five jacks. To you. To our last night. No, to our last night at sea. Tomorrow we'll be in China. Excuse me, please, but we are already in China. Hello, Mr. Moto. Hello. The Yangtze River is extremely wide where it meets the sea. Let's finish our drinks and go on deck. I know a swell place up forward. Won't you join us, Mr. Moto? Oh, no, thank you. Young love is very tiresome for a third party. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Good night, good night. Good, good night. night. That's what I want to know. I dislike to be strenuous, Mr. Carson. Well, what's the job of me for? Like a blooming gorilla. The letter, Mr. Carson. What letter? What letter are you talking about? I'm just cleaning up this, this cabin. A letter. Get away. Get away, I tell you. You touch me, and I'll cut your heart out. Huh. You think you're clever, eh? But I know who you are, Mr. Moto. That is most unfortunate for you. An importer, eh? Well, you never fooled me. I know, dear. I know, dear, the night you came aboard. I know you too. Perhaps you remember Curio Shop in San Francisco? How did you? I wasn't there, I tell you. You killed a man there. I didn't, no. And stuffed his body in a wicker basket, Mr. Carson. I didn't go to kill him. He was hiding in back of the store. So you were only kidding when you said this was our last night, weren't you? No. I'll not see you in Shanghai. But you'll have to. Where does your uncle live? I can't tell you now. Well, when am I going to find out? Tomorrow, perhaps, when we land. Whatever's worrying you can be fixed. Just let me in on it. I'll help you. You can't. Other people are involved. You're not married, are you? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm sorry to be so mysterious, but I have no choice. Look, I don't want you to tell me anything that's none of my business. Only, anything you're involved in is my business. Please don't ask me anymore. But I'm in love with you. I know. Doesn't that make any difference? Makes all the difference. Well then, the devil with all this secrecy. You and I are going to take this ship right back to the States. I want you to meet my family. <laughs> but you don't know anything about me. Who I am. Oh, who or... cares? But you have your obligations in Shanghai. You told me you promised your father to make good. All right, I will. And if I do, will you marry me then? 
We'd better wait and see what happens. <laughs> Boy, will I work. From now on, there'll be no more Playboy stuff. Nothing but business. And you. Soon be alongside, sir. Where's my regular steward? Haven't you heard? Carson's disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, sir. Didn't sleep in his bunk last night. Also, that is too bad. An accident, perhaps. Well, that's what the skipper thinks, but I got my own idea. Yes? Carson probably jumped overboard. He was a bit cracked, sir. And I hadn't tipped him yet. That is very sad. Sure. You might as well have it. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Gloria. Gloria. Excuse me, please. Where is the young lady? I should like to say goodbye. I don't know. I've looked everywhere and I can't find her. Oh, so? Her luggage is gone, too. Oh, stewardess, where's the young lady who occupies this cabin? The young lady was took off in a motor launch early this morning, sir. But she promised to give me her address this morning. I don't know where she's going. We never know what's going to happen in this life. Like Mr. Carson. Yesterday he was talking to me just like you are now. Well, I never. Can you tell me where I can find young Hitchings? There he is with a Japanese gentleman. Oh, thanks. Now, remember, if you ever come to Flatbush, don't forget to look us up. Thanks. Mr. Hitchings, I'm Joseph Wilkie. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Wilkie? Dad gave me a letter to deliver to you personally. Said it was very important. Oh, thanks. Well, oh, this is Mr. Moto. So pleased. Mr. Wilkie is our branch manager. Oh, so? Shall we go ashore now? The company launch is waiting. Sure. Will you go with us, Mr. Moto? I'm so sorry. I must go back to my cabin. But we shall meet again. Well, certainly. Shanghai is a small world. I've made reservations for you at the Cathay Hotel. You'll find it very comfortable. Oh, fine. Don't forget to look me up, Mr. Moto. We shall see each other. Good day, Mr. Wilkie. So long, Mr. Wow. So long. Wong, take Mr. Hitching's baggage dockside. Chop, chop. Who's the little Japanese gentleman? Oh, he's an importer. I met him on the ship. Nice chap. Many strange people come to Shanghai. You must be very careful. Oh, motor's all right. We're fraternity brothers. Went to the same university. Oh, that's different. <laughs> hey, boy, you catch my baggage. Chop suey. Good. You can't be in love with a girl you don't even know. But I am. From what you've told me, I should say that this woman's in a desperate position and is therefore forced to use desperate means. That's not fair. You don't know anything about her. My boy, Shanghai's a melting pot of all sorts of people in distress. For instance, we've had a lot of trouble in the colony with these white Russian women. Well, many of them are very attractive, but being without country and therefore without passports, they often resort to extreme measures in order to leave China. All that has nothing to do with Gloria. You must remember you're not in the States now. Here, yeah, tradition and custom stand for something. Social circles are very prescribed. You can't disregard them. If everybody's so class conscious here, I don't think I'm going to like it. Of course you will, my boy. You'll find Shanghai very progressive. We have up-to-date nightclubs, a racetrack. I don't give a hang about that. I've got to find Gloria. But you're not a free agent anymore, my boy. After all, you owe something to the Hitchings family. There are plenty of girls of the proper class here. I'll see that you meet them. By George, I completely forgot about your father's letter. That's perfectly blank. Hmm? Is this a joke? Well, that's funny. Dad said it was very confidential. Excuse me. Hello? Speaking. Yes, I'll hold on. San Francisco calling. You must be dead. Ready for San Francisco. Just a moment. Yes? Mr. Hitching Sr. calling his son. Oh, so? Thank you. I will listen in. All right, San Francisco. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, Dad. 
Swell. I can hear you just as clear. I said I can hear you very well. Yes, Mr. Wilkie's here with me now. Say, Dad, you know that letter you sent him? Well, there's nothing on it. It's blank. What? Then someone must have substituted it. That letter was to warn Wilkie to examine all shipments very carefully. Government agents are concentrating on the recent smuggling in San Francisco. We've had several instances of smuggled diamonds on our ships. Yesterday, customs guards discovered a large shipment of narcotics on one of our liners. There's no clue except that it came from China. Well, how was it concealed? In Oriental Curios? Well, maybe we can trace the shippers at this end. That's why I'm telephoning you. It looks like the work of a big ring dealing in a kind of contraband. The point is we are subject to a fine of $200,000. 200,000? Oh, I know it's the law, but... Now, about that letter. Evidently, the ring has men working on the Marco Polo. You must be very cautious, as you're probably being watched. All right, Dad, I'll be careful. We'll get on it right away. Want to talk to Mr. Wilkie? Hold on. Here's Mr. Hitchings. I heard. Naturally. I understand. We'll start an investigation at once. Goodbye. I can't believe it. We've got to trace those shipments. I don't understand how it was done. We examine everything thoroughly before it goes aboard. Unless it was loaded at Tinsin. Tinsin? Do our ships take on cargo there, too? Yes, we've got a Chinese agent there, old Chang. I never quite trusted him. Then I think we'd better run up there and check on him. So do I. But I've got urgent business here. I must clear up first. You think I could handle it alone? Yes, I think you could. As a matter of fact, it would probably be better. Chang doesn't know you. Of course, it's not a pleasant prospect. You'll have to catch the one o'clock express, and that gives you barely time to pack up again. Oh, you mean today? Well, that's not such a good idea. You forget I'm looking for someone. But this smuggling business is more important than a shipboard romance. Oh, yes, you're right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a deal with you. I'll go to Tinsin to find out what this Chang knows. That's the stuff. Now, wait a minute. I'll go tomorrow. Meanwhile, you've got to take me all over Shanghai and give me a chance to find Gloria. Is it a deal? <laughs> you're on. I was young once myself. Cafe Hotel. One moment, please. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'm a stranger here. Could you direct me, please, to a store where I might have some films developed? There's a camera shop up Nankin Road. I'll write you the address. Oh, you're very kind. And may I compliment the hotel on its excellent telephone service? Thank you very much. Perhaps you will condescend to have dinner tonight with a lonely Japanese gentleman? No, I might. I'm off duty at six. Thank you. I will call for you. Good afternoon. Perhaps? I'm looking for a small figure, purely decorative. A very fine J. Buddha. And Dynasty bronze. May I see that one? Yeah. No, this one. Ah, Juan Yen. Very beautiful. Chinese, goddess of mercy. A kindly lady. Is she expensive? No, $20 max. She's rather dear, isn't she? How much will you pay? I'm not anxious to buy. I prefer one with a proper setting. The proper setting has been changed. Oh, so? You did not know this? I've been away. By what happy chance did you visit my shop? I noticed the sign of the tiger. You are very well informed. 
Do you wish something else? No, thank you. My business is with your worthy superior. Good day. Good day. Yes, a drum speaking. The Japanese? No, I don't know him. Yes, I suspected that. So I've taken the liberty of having the gentleman followed. He understands more than is beneficial. All right, but don't telephone here again. Wires can be tapped. Report on this to me personally. Is everything else taken care of? Yes. The boat will be ready tonight. I will meet you at the usual place. So happy to see you again, Mr. Moto. Thank you, Chief. With your sire, I don't wish to be disturbed. Your visit to Shanghai is a pleasant surprise. Things are very quiet here. Have you an interesting case? Rather. May I offer you my humble assistance? I shall be very grateful. First, might I be permitted to inspect your files? I'm looking for information on this charming lady. Mr. Wilkie. Yes? Do you see anyone in the corridor just now? No, my boy. Why? Come inside. Somebody just slipped this under my door. It's about Gloria. I wonder who sent it. Well, we've been inquiring about her all day. It might be any one of a hundred. This is very strange. The International Club. Do you know where that is? I've never been there. It's one of those cafes down by the waterfront. Patronized by people looking for a thrill. Sounds very interesting. I wouldn't be seen in that section in daylight, let alone after dark. Then I'll just have to see it without you. But you're not thinking of actually going there. Oh, yes, of course. My dear boy, your father would never forgive me if I permitted you to go alone. We're going to find Gloria tonight. Hey, come, Shaw. Hey, hey, Gloria. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, International club, savvy? International club, me savvy. This isn't the right direction. Also, stop, please. Stop, go back. Tingla. I'm afraid you lost your way. Turn around! Go back! Quickly!
boy's motto. Are you hurt? No, thank you. Only a slap, Miss Sapp. Gee, I thought sure we were going to kill somebody. Mr. Motto is a very difficult fellow to kill. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Miss Liu, may I present Mr. Bao? How do you do? Oh, yeah. Can we drop you anywhere? Don't go out of your way, please. Well, where are you going? International Club. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So are we. Get in and join us. Chop, chop, and drive muchy careful. Very good, sir. I don't think we'll be long. All right, sir. Perhaps they won't admit us. Sure they will. What is it? May we come in? Who are you? American tourists. Plenty cash. It's all right, Ivan. They're friends of mine. Good evening. Americans, huh? Are you a tourist, too? Yes, please. We're all on the same party. A table for four, please. Oh, by the way, do you have an entertainer here named Gloria Danton? Well, we got an entertainer here. She's doing an encore now. Follow me. There's always something brewing. So beware. Twinkle in my eye makes you think I'm a butterfly, and so with each bow I have met. For fear I may create the wrong impression. Do I use top diplomacy and much discretion? I have everyone stunned while parading the bun. I'm the center of things. I appeal to them all. From bakers to kings Oh la 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 And when you say I'm a gay uncle Ken I'll reply I'm a shy violin He looks just like an angel An angel from above Is this really the girl you were telling me about? Where are you going? I'm going to see Gloria. Hey, buddy, what do you want? I'm looking for the singer's dressing room. Yeah? What do you want to see her about? She's a friend of mine. So, what's your name? Robert Hitchings. I'll see if she wants to see you. There's a fellow by the name of Hitchens wants to see you. Please show him in. He says to go in. Well, I found you after all. You've got to leave this place right away. <laughs> after the trouble I've had? Oh, oh, no. I mean it. It's dangerous for you to be here. Will you explain why, please? What is it? It's me, Chief. Dang, unlock it. Young Hitchings is in Tanya's dressing room, and she told him the to lamb. How long has he been in the club? Just a few minutes, come in with some other people. There was a Japanese guy with him. Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, I didn't have a chance. I was watching them. You finish this. Have it ready to load on the launch in half an hour. Come on, Boris. No, I won't go until you tell me what you're doing in a place like this. All right, I'll tell you if you'll promise to go. My real name is Tanya Boris. I'm a white Russian. We lived in Harbin until a year ago. My father was killed mysteriously, and I escaped to Shanghai. You had friends here, someone you knew? Oh, Nimalov, the owner of the place. He's also from Harbin. He was kind to me, hired me as an entertainer here, even though I knew nothing of that kind of work. Well, what were you doing in Honolulu, and why'd you use that phony name? I was traveling on a forged passport that Marlov secured for me. He... 
He sent me to find out why you were going to Shanghai. What? But why? I am afraid you have already told your friend, Mr. Hitchings, more than he should know. Who are you? I am Marlowe. May I ask you if there are Japanese gentlemen in your party tonight? Friend of mine, any objections? I'm not certain yet. But you, unfortunately, will have to be detained. For what? In order that I may learn what happened to a certain employee of mine. What are you talking about? Do you remember a steward named Carson? Yes. Certainly. Carson was on the Marco Polo to keep an eye on you, Tanya. To spy on me? Last night he sent a message saying you had fallen in love with this young man. He was then to search your stateroom for some information I was anxious to obtain. Oh, my father's letter to Wilkie. I'm beginning to understand now. However, Carson was not aboard the Marco Polo when the ship arrived this morning. The reports are he disappeared sometime during the night. You killed Carson when you found him in your room? I did not. I didn't even know he was there. I want to talk to you, Tanya. Oh, leave her alone. She hasn't told me anything. I wish I could believe you. Show Mr. Hitchings our fantan room. <laughs> that was very foolish of you. Oh, no! Take them both downstairs. Right now. 124, 125. It's wonderful, Mr. Moto. I don't see how you keep from spoiling it. Patience, my dear Miss Liu, is the most useful of virtues. Well, good evening, Mr. Wilkie. I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, sir. I forgot you don't know me. I've seen you around the city so many times, Mr. Wilkie. Permit me, I'm Marlow. You're the proprietor here. At your service. Miss Liu, may I present Mr. Marlow? And I'm Mr. Moto, Mr. Marlow. I'm delighted to welcome you to the International Club. I'm honored, sir. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. We're waiting for my guest to return. Mr. Robert Hitchings, the son of our president. He went out to speak to your singer. Met her on the ship. Oh, yes. It is the young man I saw going into her dressing room then. I wish he'd come back. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to make your evening more pleasant. I've heard of uh, gambling. I think we can supply almost any game. Would you like to come along, Mr. Wilkie? I never indulge in games of chance. You should try it, Mr. Wilkie. I find it very exhilarating. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> What is that you wrote, Mr. Moto? Who oh, this? <laughs> An ancient Japanese poem called Haik. Must be exactly 17 syllables. Very difficult. Furui Keni Kawazu. Tobikomu Mizu no Oto. Very nice sentiment. You won't mind if I desert you for a short time? No, no, indeed. Perhaps you might persuade Miss Liu to dance. Shall we go, Mr. Marlowe? himself against inquisitive visitors. The chief's coming. Here we are. It's a little quiet tonight, isn't it? It's too early for the play to start yet. Oh, so? And what game do you favor, Mr. Moto? Phantom, roulette, pharaoh, Dice. Well, those are games for people who play at gambling. I'm sure we can oblige you, Mr. Modo. I prefer action when I gamble. I like the quick turn of a card. We can cut for high cards if you like. Excellent. Max, take a card. Oh. What's the matter? My dress. Just look. 
I'll have to go somewhere and fix it. I'm sorry. I'll hurry back. Non, 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 non. Alors, je dis au commandant ceci. Mon commandant, je regrette beaucoup. J'ai une affaire de la plus haute importance à faire. Will you cut first? After you, sir. Let it try it. With pleasure. Your turn. Pardon me, please. I could have sworn you had the jack of spades. That's a king, all right. That is strange. What? Well, I'm very much interested in that tiger symbol over there on the wall. Yes? I'm familiar with a similar one. Hmm? San Francisco? San Francisco? In a certain curio shop just off Grand Avenue. In Chinatown? Will you cut? No, 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 no. Alors voilà pourquoi ça s'est passé. J'ai dit, une petite seconde, je suis très occupé. Et alors, j'ai dit, alors, j'ai dit. I never had such luck. There's a saying that ill fortune at gambling is often a sign of success in other fields. What other fields? Oh, business perhaps. Certainly your establishment appears prosperous. On the other hand, it is possible that business alone is not enough. If one had uh, a sideline. Would you mind explaining that? Is it well to speak confidentially before so many? All right. The boys, wait outside. Max will call you. Okay, boss. The police department, quickly. Shanghai police. The chief? Hello? I'm calling for Mr. Moto. We're at the International Club. Hello. Hello. Two squad car, hurry to the International Club. Notify the River Division also. You see, Mr. Marlow, I have access to certain merchandise upon which we could both profit. Well, I'm interested in profits. Precisely. But mutual trust is the basis of a successful partnership. Partnership? Uh-huh. And on what basis? Oh, <laughs> equality. Equality? And this merchandise you speak of? The same in which you already deal. Yes. And uh, other merchandise also. I see. And how am I to be certain that you are what you pretend to be? My dear sir, <laughs> I know what happens to one who tries to deceive you. I remember the gentleman in the curio shop in San Francisco, the gentleman in the wicker crate. Am I a fool to take such a risk unless... Uh, unless what? Unless I am what I claim to be. Shall we trust each other, Mr. Marlowe? What is your connection with young Hitchings? I too was following him to discover why he was on his way to Shanghai. The United States government is beginning to be too much interested in smuggling. We are both in the same business, Mr. Marlowe. Shall we not combine forces for our own protection and profit? 
I think we shall get along together, Mr. Moto. <laughs> I was sure you were a good judge of character, Mr. Marlowe. What about young Mr. Hitchings and uh, the girl? Marx, show Mr. Moto our vault. And what do you propose to do with them? The young woman will go with me. The gentleman has hurt too much. We have a cure for him, the river. I think you're wrong. Wrong why? My dear Marlow, I agree with you. There's but one penalty for treachery. Slit her throat and be done with it. But the young man, after all, he's the son of the owner of the hitching land. A millionaire. He may be worth a lot of money to us. Alive. What do you want? Can you direct me to the gambling room? Very sorry. Gamble room closed for tonight. Closed? We have a shipment already on board our launch. Perhaps you would like to go with us to deliver it to the Marco Polo. Excellent. And we can dispose of the young lady on the way. Max, open the door. Oh, Mr. Welkin. Where's young Hitchings? What does this mean? I demand that you release him at once. And if we do not? Get away from him, Wilkie. So that's what you are. He's a crook. He's in with Marlow. I think, gentlemen, all this excitement is hardly necessary. And Tommy, I'll handle him. Yes, I've got to get you out of here as soon as possible. Marlow Saib, I'm late because of... Saib. That man! That man is police spy! That Japanese! He is the one who shot me. He is the man I had followed to police station. Stand perfectly still. Please to come over here. But Mr. Mo... Now think first, Mr. Moto. So you are a police spy, eh? Don't... Excite yourself, Mr. Marlow. You won't do any more spying. Well, then, let's have it over with at once. Often, I have won. I can also lose. <laughs> You and Mux take those people to the boat. Yeah. We have to leave at once. And now, Mr. Moto. If you please. Here. Get up, Mr. Marlow. Mr. Wilkie. May I request you to secure his gun? You'll find it inside his coat. off. I took hold of the gun and it shot him. Also, that would seem to dispose of Mr. Marlow. Hello, Chief. Mr. Marlow, what's happened? We got your telephone message. Mr. Marlow was shot accidentally by Mr. Wilkie. I'm sorry, Mr. Moto. You had me fooled, but you saved our lives, old man. Your apology is accepted, Mr. Ball. I must apologize too, Mr. Moto. I didn't know. Let me congratulate you. What? What is all this? Mr. Moto, well, who are you anyway? I think this will explain. You recognize the company? Well, then you are... I have the honor to be the managing director. You've heard of us? Of course, you're our best customer, but... I don't understand. I was forced to take matters into my own hands. My business as well as yours. 
was being seriously jeopardized by the smuggling activities of Mr. Marlowe and uh, his friends. Well, then you're not a detective after all. Oh, only as a hobby. <laughs> but what's all this got to do with me? I demand that Mr. Wilkie. You are not in a position to demand. It was not an accident that Mr. Wilkie shot Mr. Marlowe. What? No. I first suspected that some person in a responsible position had something to do with the smuggling when I read this letter. Mr. Hitchings gave his son to deliver to you, Mr. Wilkie. And here it is. And when Mr. Marlow made the unfortunate error of recognizing you upstairs, I began to think I might be correct. And when you found this room and knew the correct code signal to gain admission, I was practically certain. But I wanted even stronger proof. So I decided to give you an opportunity to kill the only man who knew that you were the head of this ring of smugglers. Mr. Moto, your young lady will be all right. Miss Liu, what happened to her? Someone shot her while she was telephoning us. Oh, so? Then I suggest that you see if there's not a gun with one cartridge fired in Mr. Wilkie's pocket. Silence, sir. You're right. Take him away. The river police caught the rest of the gang. Thank you, Chief. Well, Mr. Moto, I thought you were shot. Yes, aren't you hurt? Oh, yes. <laughs> but fortunately, I was wearing my new style waistcoat. Quite uncomfortable but very effective for such occasions. Oh. <laughs> well, now I know you're the one that put that note under my door. You wanted Wilkie to come here. Alpha Omega, Mr. Bob. <laughs> Alpha Omega, Mr. Moto. Alpha Omega? again. Well, certainly seems that Mr. Moto is quite the jujitsu expert now, isn't he? <laughs> now, for most of his career, Peter Lorre was typically cast in support roles. But very early in his career, he did have his fair number of lead and co-lead roles. His breakout film, certainly, was 1931's M. In that, he had the role of Hans Beckert, and he played the role of a serial child killer. Now, that was a German film, and it was done in the style of what was called German Expressionism. It was a very dark, very moody style, and many film historians see that as having been... Uh, it was the early forerunner to what in later years would become film noir. Now, some other films in which he had lead or co-lead roles. He was in 1934's The Man Who Knew Too Much. Two in 1935, he was in Mad Love and Crime and Punishment. 1936's uh, Crack Up and 1940's Stranger on the Third Floor. <laughs> now that was a good film. And of course, in 1937 is when he received the lead role for the Mr. Moto films. Now, the one that you just saw was the first in the series. This next picture is the second movie in the series and it was made the same year. So, again from 1937, thank you, Mr. Moto. Let's roll the picture.
Hoover to make camp here. Storm be over soon. We better go on, huh? Do as you are told. We'll reach Peking soon enough. Something must have frightened you. Glad he didn't hurt you. Get on pack. Who sent you? Let me go. I'll tell. Well. Uh. Why we wait so long, huh? Special inspection of some kind. Open up your coats. What have we got in that pouch? Oh, there are a few belongings, all mine. How long have you been with this caravan? Uh, oh, long, very long time, sir. He joined us at Changpei. Wasn't that near the place where Ning, the Mongolian, disappeared? Huh? Yes, sir. Take this one into the garden. What do I mean? Nothing can see on him, sir. Sorry to cause you all this trouble. That's all right, Mrs. Snyder. We are more anxious to stop the smuggling of our treasure than you are. Hello. Wait. Let me see that.
Mr. Mordor, not here. You go away. Be chair, chair. that I need it. Funny letter come for you, sir. So I see. Did you miss me, John Keener? Very lonely for us while you're away. Wing, how long has it been since you've seen your family? Over three years. Also, suppose you had two weeks leave of absence, a railroad ticket on a train tonight, and a little money to buy presents for your honorable parents. Would you go? Oh, Mr. Moto. Here, please. And the ticket will be in your name at the station. Thank you, Mr. Moto. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Mr. Wing. But when you return, I shall expect you to be more alert. Where are my clothes? Oh, oh, I'm so happy I forget everything. Happy I'm back, Chunkina. Did you miss me? Oh. My presence is requested at a garden party tonight. Garden parties are seldom given in peeping without a purpose, Chankina. I wonder what Colonel Cherno's purpose is. This is Cavaliere Cacciatore of the Italian Legation. This is a big pleasure. Herr von Kurger. Delighted. And Monsieur Dupont, the French Counselor. Mademoiselle, c'est un plaisir de vous connaître. Je vous remercie, Monsieur. I believe I'm next in line, Colonel Turner. Oh, my dear, I should like to present a countryman of yours, Mr. Thomas Nelson of the American Legation. I am so glad with pleasure. I've been wanting to meet you, Miss Joyce, ever since I made an interesting discovery about you. Why? Well, you see, I'm psychic. I've been in this country just long enough to soak up some of its uh, oriental mysticism. Now, last night, for instance, I went into a trance and... Uh, uh, shall we dance and I'll tell you all about it? Eva, has Mr. Moto arrived yet? No, sir. Perhaps something has happened to delay him. Now, while you were in this trance, just what did you find out about me? Oh, that your father is Norton Joyce, the famous importer. How interesting. Go on. That you are five feet four inches tall, you weigh 114 pounds, and your age... Be careful. That you have lovely soft brown eyes, that your complexion is fair, and you have a mole on your... It isn't a mole, it's a freckle. Oh, but your passport definitely says it's a mole. Now, you don't want to make a liar out of your passport, do you? So that's your oriental magic. You've got my passport. Oh, but yes, madame. That's why you had to leave it at the embassy, so that I could return it to you in person. One look at your passport photo and I was cast in a spell. The girl of my dreams. Oh, give me that. <laughs> you see that hook on the end of your name? That means stubbornness. Give me that passport. You know, I think we'd better go over and sit down because what I have to tell you about your handwriting is going to take quite a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tom. Oh. 
Who's that man? His name's Moto. Adventurer, explorer, soldier of fortune. One of the Orient's mysteries. Nobody knows very much about him, except that whenever he shows up, something usually happens. Sounds fascinating. I want to meet him. Most people do. Good evening, madame. Good evening. I'm so glad you could come, Mr. Moto. It was so very thoughtful of you to invite me. Not at all. Good night, dear Kurga. We get. Donka, good. Colonel Chernoff, will you introduce Mr. Moto to the guest of honor? Of course. Miss Joyce, may I present Mr. Moto? I carry this car? Yoroshu gozaimasu. Arigato. Anatavani hongo hanashimasu I'm sorry, that's all I know. I picked that up by one day in Yokohama. Your accent is superb. You'll excuse us, won't you? It isn't often I have a chance to dance with my husband. Sir. I have the honor to have met your father, Miss Joyce. He indeed is a true connoisseur of oriental art. Miss Joyce was telling me that she is here to pick up some antiques herself. She's writing a book on Chinese art. Also, it is impressive to find one so young and attractive with an appreciation for fine carvings, porcelains, and uh, scroll paintings. My father taught me what appreciation I have. It is wise to be extremely cautious, Miss Joyce. Why do you say that? Oh, deception is a fine art with dealers in oriental antiques. <laughs> That's right, I bought a jade Buddha once and it turned out to be soapstone. <laughs> My father gave me a pretty good detective course, but thanks for the advice. Quite welcome. May I have the honor of this dance? Why, yes. I've enjoyed meeting you, Mr. Motor. It was my pleasure, Mr. Joyce. Pardon? The next girl that wants to meet you can write you a letter. I have noticed that you were troubled with shyness, Mr. Tom. <laughs> Suppose you try cutting in. One meets every nationality in Peking, even Chinese. <laughs> For instance, there is Prince Chung and his mother, Chinese nobility. She reminds me of pictures of the old Empress Dowager. She was lady-in-waiting to the Empress. Madame Chung disapproves strongly of modern China and of foreigners. Thank you. Now, tomorrow we'll go shopping, and then after dinner we'll go to the Chen Quang. What's that? Movie theater. I and came here to write a book, remember? All right, but make it a trilogy, will you? Something it'll take us years to finish. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you are enjoying yourself, Madame Chung. I am being amused. My honorable mother seldom attends these functions. Well, perhaps I could offer you something to eat. Thank you. I have never learned to enjoy foreign dishes. When you find it convenient, will you come in the library for a few moments? I should like to confer with your son on a matter of importance. If you wish. Thank you. Madame? I knew there was a purpose behind this affair. He wants something of you, my son. Never fear, Mother. He will not get it. I will return soon. Cocktail, sir? No, thank you, but you may bring me a glass of milk, please. Please excuse me for mentioning such a delicate subject, but I should like to help you. You and your mother were once quite wealthy. A considerable contrast to your present position. It will perhaps save you time if I tell you at once that I have no intention of selling any of the treasures of the House of Chung. I am interested only in a few minor pieces. For example? Well, I might be able to offer a substantial sum for your set of scroll paintings. Those minor pieces are authentic paintings of the time of Kublai Khan. In that case, I could probably pay much more. You wish these for your own collection? No, I'm buying them for a friend of mine. There are few enough treasures left in my country. Surely you understand. These scrolls have been handed down through 12 generations of my family. I could not part with them. The restoration of your fortune would mean a great deal to your mother. It must be hard for her to accustom herself to, forgive me, poverty. You are too proud. I respect your beliefs, but you are refusing a helping hand. I am sorry. I cannot sell. I'll pay you enough to make it worth your while if that's what's worrying you. 
among our people. Social gatherings are not arranged for the purpose of transacting business deals. See here. I've got to have those scrolls. Either you will sell them to me or I'll find other ways of getting them. You will never obtain them, Colonel Chernoff. The honor of my ancestors depends upon it. You are always talking about honor and ancestors. And still you sell anything if you get your price. That is a lie. I am certain you will regret these insults. Good evening. Wait! You are not leaving here. Not until you change your mind. I decided I wanted to see another corner of the world, so I managed to get sent here as a code clerk. Can you decode what I'm thinking about now? Something romantic, I hope. Wrong again. I was thinking I haven't been to Chile since I left California. Oh, I'll get you a wrap. Where do you keep them? You'd never find it. I'll be right there. I'll be right here. He's quite dead, I assure you. Most regrettable. What happened? Please understand that we must be discreet about this. Extremely discreet. What do you mean? They are representatives of a dozen nations outside in the garden. One injudicious word from either of us might provoke a very serious international incident. But Colonel Chernoff has been killed. We must tell someone, call the police, do something. Certainly, Miss Joyce, certainly. In due time. There's very little the police can do about uh, suicide. Oh, but it can't be suicide. The gun is in his hand. It is suicide, Miss Joyce. We call it Harakiri. He stabbed himself, as you can see. You know it's not suicide. It's murder. Of course it is murder, dear lady. But it would be difficult to prove it. Would it not? You honor my poor house by your presence, Mr. Moto. I regret that I was unable to thank you last night for saving my unworthy life. I'm extremely sorry that I was forced to employ such uh, severe measures. If I had entered the library a moment earlier, I might have disarmed him, but unfortunately for Colonel Chernoff, he was about to shoot you. Well, perhaps it was better that way. I wish that I could express my gratitude in more tangible form than words. You can, Your Highness. I am delighted. I should very much like to see the scrolls that Colonel Chernoff was so anxious to obtain. You honor me by your interest in my humble possessions. Please excuse me. One of my illustrious ancestors painted these scrolls centuries ago. He said that originally there were seven scrolls in the set. 
But as far as our family records go, there were only six. There is a legend that the seventh scroll is hidden in a lamasery in the Gobi Desert. I believe it is more than a legend. Oh, what harmony of line and color. This is truly a voiceless poem. I do not wonder that Colonel Chernov wanted them so ardently. I'm afraid that the Colonel's interest was prompted by something beyond the love of art. Oh, so? My honorable father told me that these scrolls, placed in order, form a picture map indicating the location of a great treasure hidden in the tomb of Genghis Khan. Oh, but the tomb of Genghis Khan has never been discovered, Your Highness. The ancient chronicles say that he is buried in the forest near the edge of the Gobi Desert. These paintings are supposed to indicate the location of the burial place and the lost treasure. I'm so very happy to hear this corroboration from your own lips. You have also heard the legend? Well, that's why I'm in Peiping. I was sent here to learn whether such a treasure exists, and if it does, to take the necessary steps to recover it. Your family, of course, would benefit greatly should I succeed. This is a great surprise to me, Mr. Moto. My family has no desire to desecrate the tomb of the great Khan. Oh, I'm so sorry, Your Highness, but my mission has been clearly defined. Oh, this bridge on the first scroll seems familiar. It is still in existence, the Marco Polo Bridge. Only a short distance from here. Oh, of course. <laughs> and the second showing the sampan sailing into the setting sun undoubtedly means that the first stage of the journey is westwards from Peiping, up the Hang Ho River. That is the traditional explanation. I leave blank this base where the third of the series should be. Its principal decoration was a peculiarly shaped pagoda which would... Respectful greetings, Honorable Mother. Your Highness. For oh, showing Mr. Moto our poor treasures. Have you forgotten they are not to be looked upon by strangers? Mr. Moto is hardly a stranger. That may be. But as long as they remain in our vault, their secret is safe. Return the scrolls to the vault. My worthy mother does not understand the service you have done me. Your Honorable Mother is quite right. I should never have presumed upon your friendship. Please, Your Highness. Forgive my ill-bred eagerness. On our ancestral tablets is engraved the oath of our family. Honor above wealth, tradition above self. If you have come to buy the Chung Yon scrolls, you have failed. I would not offend you by offering to buy them. For over 600 years, men have been seeking the tomb of Genghis Khan to despoil it. That is why so many people want our scrolls, and that is why we will never part with them. I regret that I have to appear impolite with you, but already we have lost one of the set. I understand, Your Highness. May I ask what happened to the missing scroll? A short time ago, the museum requested the loan of one as an example of the Yon dynasty art. Against my better judgment, I consented. The second day of the exhibition, it disappeared. You made attempts to recover it, however. We offered as large a reward as our circumstances permitted, but to no avail. Our only response was from a foreign barbarian, a dealer in doubtful antiques, who pretended he had made a mistake as soon as he discovered we were the rightful owners. It would appear that my task is slightly more complicated than I thought. Ivan? Miss Joyce is in the library, sir. Not only is this genuine Quan Yin of Tang Dynasty, but it is very authentic. Hello. Not ready? Oh, come on in, Tom. Madam Cherno, feeling any better? Yes, thanks. I was just looking at some antiques this gentleman brought to show me. I sell only genuine objects of art, Sin Ho. Observe these objects. Genuine Buddha of Wei Dynasty. Ah, I see you appreciate fine work, Senorita. This is very old scroll painting, exceedingly rare. Look, Tom, isn't it lovely? Very nice. Uh, what's it represent? 
Who can say, Senor? Art is long time dead. Observe the color, Senorita. As fresh as if they were painted yesterday. Yet, it is many hundred years old. How much are you asking for this? To you, I make very reasonable price. Two thousand dollar gold. That's Two thousand gold? I show someone else. Maybe other people buy. You'll never get that price for it. Perhaps not. Two weeks ago, I sold Chinese painting for ten thousand dollars. I do not lie. You like this? Well, I'm more interested in the scroll. I'll give you five hundred dollars next for it. I would lose money, senorita. I go now. Maybe I come back. You must come to my shop sometime. I have very large collection. How do you manage to get a hold of those things? That I cannot tell, senor. I am honest man. You ask anyone about Pereira. I am foremost antiquarian in Peking. Good day. Remember my address if you want genuine objects of art. I'd like to have had that scroll, but he wanted too much money for it. Oh, you can probably get it for a lot less. He was just trying to find out how much he wanted it. Funny part of it is, Father especially asked me to buy early Chinese scrolls. Well, let's get started then. I know where there's a whole street full of curio shops. Mm. Oh, we all want to see those three acrobats. Sure, stop here. One more. Anyway. Get the crowd interested and then they won't do their best trick until they're paid off. Money? No got enough money, no catchy, no show. No, wait a minute. <laughs> you gave them enough for 40 tricks, they'll probably break their necks. Dead my dead my Han ha, han ha. Shop. I think I'll go in and look at that scroll again. Well, that's no way to shop in this country. Let him come to you. You'd better always go shopping with me. That's one of my honorable intentions. Let's try across the street. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Moto. Were you able to find any bargains? We're trying to decide what place to get gypped in. Oh, but certainly no one with Miss Joyce's training would purchase any soapstone date with us. Please don't let me detain you. I too have shopping to do. Sayonara. So long. Nice day. Come in, sir, look. Mr. Pereira? Si, senor. Can I help you? I've heard that you possess some very unusual objects of art. My stock is quite large. I'm especially interested in a scroll painting of the Yuan Dynasty. Such scrolls are rare and very expensive. Oh, I'm prepared to pay well should I find a certain one. It matches a rather famous set. I have a Chinese scroll, 13th century. Very fine. I show you. Excuse me one minute. Please. Mr. Moto just went to Pereira's shop.
You play well, Saint Paul. There's nothing like the music of a samisen to make one recall cherry blossoms. See, si, Saint Paul. Observe this excellent example, early Chinese art. Like it? I make good price. Two thousand dollar gold. This isn't thirteenth century. Perhaps not, but it is very ancient. Yes, as ancient as uh, a month or so. The silk, though cleverly aged, is new, and the paint is of inferior modern grade. But Senor, that is impossible. You certainly did not intend to defraud me. Oh no 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 no! I am honest man. Ask anybody about Pereira. I buy from Cooley, who swear he steal from Temple. Many missing art treasures have been traced to your shop, Mr. Pereira. But this isn't one of them. Do not be angry, Senor. I make a mistake. You made a mistake when you stole a real scroll. No. From the museum? No, no, no. Who paid you to steal it, Mr. Pereira? I cannot say. They will kill me. And I kill you right now if you don't tell me. Oh, I explain everything, Saint Hall. I did obtain such scroll as you described. I was well paid. By whom, Mr. Pereira? By. Answer quickly. By a man known as. Your premonition was correct, Mr. Pereira. Somebody shot the front out of Ferrara's store. Gentlemen, this number one J. Buddha, barely fine. No, thank you, don't worry. What if anybody's hurt? Bring really good luck, really small price. You buy him for Miss, you know? No, no way. Miss, you buy for gentlemen, number one J, first class. Please, we don't want it. You killed him. We were talking to him not half an hour ago. Price too big, maybe? You make your offer. Look, I told you I didn't want it, will you? Please go away. Barely A1 quality, feel jade. You see? Cold like your icebox. Pardon, please. Did you witness shooting? No, we were across the street at the time in his shop. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen and Missy come by Lama 1 J Buddha. Price $15 max. $15 too much? You pay $11, no? You are American, sir? That's right. I'm with the legation. $10? Thank you. You will please excuse me. I must question others. You pay three dollar mention number one J Buddha belong you. Oh, all right. There. Gentlemen, kitchen number one bargain. Come on, let's get out of here. How my bosses! How my bosses! Drink your coffee and we'll go see a movie. Would you mind if I just asked you to take me home instead? Well, there's nothing like a murder to ruin a perfectly good evening. I'm sorry to be such a killjoy, but... After all, that's the second death I've seen since I've been here. I wonder why that antique dealer was killed. We haven't found any motive yet. By the way, where was Mr. Moto when that shooting occurred? He went across the street to Pereira's shop right after he left us, didn't he? Yes, that's what I've been wondering. Tom, there's something I've got to tell you. Colonel Chernoff didn't kill himself. What? I mean, it's a little difficult to believe he did. The circumstances were so strange. Darling, you just upset it. It, it couldn't have been anything but suicide. His hand was grasping the knife when you found him. Wasn't it? Good evening. Hello, Mr. Moto. Please sit down. I was so happy to hear that an official verdict of suicide has been returned in the death of Colonel Chernoff. It would have spoiled Miss Joyce's visit if she had been subjected to much unnecessary questioning. I'm sure I could have answered satisfactorily. One can never predict what the police will consider satisfactory. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Good evening, Miss Joyce. So long, Mr. Tom. So long, Mr. Moto. Good night. You know, he's right at that. They could have bothered you with a lot of questioning. Please, Tom, take me home. Well, sure. Check, please. 
May I have my key, please? Here you are, Mr. Bodo. Thank you very much. May I speak with the manager, please? Hello. This is Mr. Moto speaking in room 303. I have recently discharged my number one boy and he has repaid me by trying to rob me. Pardon? No, nothing serious, but I have a very valuable art treasure here that I should like to leave in your safe from now on. Yes, I shall be down with it directly. Thank you very much. Stay where you are. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Hand me that cord and keep your mouth shut. Now get over there. One, not one, Kaifan. You wait here. Sabi? Me Sabi. Me you too, I, uh... Good night, and thanks for everything. Don't go yet. There's something on your mind, Eleanor. I know it's got something to do with those scrolls. What is it? Mm, nothing really, Tom. I guess I'm just nervous over Colonel Chernoff's suicide. Well, look, let me come in for a while, will you? I, I don't like to leave you alone like this. Oh, I shan't be alone. Madame Chernoff is here, and they're the servants. Well, all right. I'm still worried about you. Good night. I'll phone you when I get in to make sure you're all right. Good night. Good night. And Kofu. Sir. Madame Chernov retired rather early. She's still suffering from the shock. May I get you something, mademoiselle? Oh, no, thank you, Ivan. I'll find a book and read myself to sleep.
Get me 24521, please. Hello? Yes, darling, I have it. Schnard is waiting outside. We'll meet you there in ten minutes. Good evening, Miss Joyce. Please don't be alarmed. I'm only attempting to break into the safe. If you're trying to steal that scroll, you needn't bother. Madame Chernoff took it away. Oh, so? It's most unfortunate for me. And for you, too. Why include me? Because you, like myself, are interested in scrolls. But I wouldn't commit murder to get one. That's the reason you killed Colonel Chernoff. Of course. I thought it was a very good reason. My dear Miss Joyce, I find your confidence in the police both flattering and disturbing. I should advise you to postpone your call until I'm ready for them. But I don't understand why this, it is that... perhaps, might eliminate any further confusion. Oh, I wish I'd known before that you were a detective. Only as a hobby. It's extremely diverting, and sometimes, as in the present case, I find it possible to combine it with my profession, which is that of an importer. So my interest in a Chang Yuan scrolls is quite easy to understand, isn't it? Yes, I see now. Where did Madame Chernoff take the scroll? I don't know. But she telephoned someone whom she called Darling. Her lamentation for her husband seemed to have been of short duration. Did you hear the telephone number? I think it was 24521. Would you please connect me with Mr. Feng of the telephone company? I may have misunderstood that number. Mr. Feng, this is Mr. Moto speaking. Thank you very well. Could you please tell me whose telephone bears the number 24521? I'll wait. Very obliging gentleman, Mr. Feng, but submerged in an uninteresting occupation. Mr. Feng, yes? Oh, so. Thank you very much. I'm quite sure your hearing was not at fault. 23729, if you please. This might be rather urgent. May I speak to Prince Chang, if you please? Wu Yuang Shui Chang, Sen Sen. Shashi Chang, Ching Wang, Swaha. This is Prince Chang speaking. Ah, good evening, Mr. Moto. Please excuse me for calling at this hour, but I have reason to believe that an attempt will be made to steal your scrolls tonight. I shall take every precaution. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. You are quite welcome, Your Highness. Tsai Chen. Tsai Chen. You'll forgive my rather sudden departure. Where are you going? to the home of my friend, where I may be of some assistance. He's in danger. But you just spoke to him. Oh, no. I spoke to someone who pretended to be the prince, but whose knowledge of the Chinese language could be improved. Answer it, please. Hello? Oh, hello, Tom. Well, darling, I'm home. Just checking up on you. It might be wise to ask Mr. Tom to come over. Oh, Tom. Madame Chernoff has gone out. Maybe you better drop back here for a while. I'm a little nervous. Uh-huh. What did I tell you? I'll be right over. Au revoir. Do not neglect to lock the door securely after I go. <gasps> Don't try to call for help. 
Keep an eye on him. Those scrolls must be hidden someplace else. We have searched every room. They're here somewhere. Moto phoned Chung to warn him, didn't he? But I tell you, it couldn't have been Moto you talked to. He's dead. I had to shoot him to get that scroll he brought back from the Gobi Desert. You thought you killed him before in Pereira's shop. I tell you, he tricked you. Well, how could he? He was standing as close as you are now. I killed him with his own gun. Which he very conveniently left for you to use, you stupid fool. I warned you not to underestimate Moto. If he's as clever as you think, perhaps your impersonation of Prince Chung didn't deceive him. Suppose he should send it for the police. I'll handle this. We're wasting time. Now then, where are those scrolls? Where are they? Mr. Moto! Mr. Moto! Where's Eleanor? 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 Now will you tell me? No. You'd better talk. Where are they? You'll never find them. What's happened? Where's Eleanor? Is she... Isn't she here? No. The front door was open when I came in it. What are you doing here, anyway? Do you have a car? Yes. Why? Please take me to the house of Prince Chung at once. Prince Chung? What's that got to do with Eleanor? I suspect we will find her there. Please. You'll never find out that way. Chinese are stubborn swine. You could kill them before they'll talk. I'll give you one more chance. No. Untie his mother. Bring her in. Perhaps you'll change your mind. I told you to wait at the house. I brought Miss Joyce. She's out in the car tied up. You what? I had to do it. Moto came there and told her everything. Moto? Where is he now? He wouldn't bother us. After he telephoned Prince Chong, he realized that something was wrong and started over here. I stopped him. Good work. Put the girl in my car. We'll be leaving soon. Who was that? Yvonne. You'd better wait outside with him. What's happened? Never mind. He'll explain. Oh, my son. I am proud of you. He refuses to tell where your scrolls are. Did you expect him to bring dishonor upon his family? Well, perhaps he'll talk to protect you. No! Stop! Oh, no. have no fear for me. Please! No! Stop! Don't! Please! He will never tell you. No! No! I warn you. Wait! <laughs> I'll tell. Do not speak. Well, where are they? I'll tell. Well? Do not bring disgrace upon your ancestors. They are in the vault behind the shrine. Hmm. 
My son. You knew she was after the scrolls. She's been dangerous ever since she came to the house, yet you bring her over here. We can't take her along. It'll only cause more trouble. Kirger doesn't seem to think so. Are they all there? We'll see. Now our scroll shows a certain pagoda. It fits in here somewhere. Wait, there's the Marco Polo Bridge. That's a start. And that must be the second one, the river. Now, we follow the river till we come to the pagoda on our scroll. Now, the inscription on our scroll is a poem describing the view from the top terrace of the pagoda. It must be this mountain pass or that section of the Great Wall. That's Nankow Pass. I can recognize it. Let me have the scroll you took from Mordo's room. Here it is. That makes seven. That's the complete set. Let's get started. Look out! Wait outside. The car's ready. Turn right at the next corner, please. Marco Polo Bridge. Go by way of the Tsai Homan Gate. Sorry. Where's Eleanor? Do you know? They've gone to the Marco Polo Bridge. They have all the scrolls. It's not too late to stop them. Hello. Hello, operator. They'll have to leave by one of the city gates. Operator. Operator. I'm afraid Herr Kerger has denied us the use of this instrument. Let's go after them. No! No! I'll get a doctor. He has no need for a doctor. I have put dishonor on the name of Chung. I have betrayed the secret of the tomb of Genghis Khan. The foreigners will rob it of its treasure. They will not find it, Your Highness. Who is there to stop them? They have all the scrolls. Even the seventh one. You did not tell me you possessed her. My very good friend, remember the words. Birth is not a beginning. Death is not an end. I cannot face my ancestors. The hand of a friend may take up the fallen burden. Your worthy mother will be avenged. I swear it. And the tomb? Before the guards of your house, I promise that no one shall ever desecrate it. Nothing more we can do for him now. Only a prayer. 
pray. Namu Amitabhu. Let's go. Your papers, please. Right. We're driving out to Chitaizu for the weekend. Yes. Come on. Mr. Moto, International Police. Yes, sir. Did the black limousine go through here recently? Just a few minutes ago. Call Li Ching with the Marshal of Peiping and tell him that I've gone after that car. They'll probably hire a boat at the Marco Polo Bridge. Notify the river police at Ling Tau to be on the lookout. Yes, sir, Mr. Moto. Come on! If we only knew what kind of pagoda was on Chernoff's scroll. If we don't stop them before they leave the river, we'll never find Miss Joyce. We were too late once. Quite well. Not mine. I bought it from my boss. I've charted that junk over there. Take the girl inside the cabin and keep her out of sight, understand? You go boat side, come back for me, chop chop. Savvy? Be savvy. Shall I go now? Yes, drive across the bridge and double back on another road. When you're sure you're not being followed, join me at Ling Tao. There's a car coming now. Slow down, Mr. Tom, the bridge is just ahead. If that's motor or the police, stop them. He may be useful to us. Both side. Come on in here with me. Never mind the car. Have you lost your mind? What are you going to do with them? Stop worrying, will you? Yvonne, tell the captain to keep midstream. Don't permit anyone to board us, understand? Yes, sir. Nelson's come out of it. Oh, hello, Nelson. You're lucky you're not at the bottom of the river with your friend Moto. You can't get away with this. Little left word at the gate for the police to follow you. I don't think they'll find us. The route we're taking hasn't been discovered for 600 years. You see, the artist who designed this picture map made certain that all the scrolls were needed to follow its instructions. We have the complete set. Mr. Kerger. Yes? The captain is having some trouble with his deckhands. What kind of trouble? They're frightened of something. Think the boat is haunted by some evil spirits. Well, get up and keep them quiet. We don't want the river police after us. Yes, sir. Tell him to shut up! No can do! Him she goes! Make plenty noise! Flight and bad spirit away! Are you crazy? There is no such thing as ghosts! There! No, I see him too! What's going on up there anyway? Oh, it 
It's nothing. You heard Yvonne say they were superstitious. I'll go. Good evening, everybody. Oh, I should advise you not to shoot me, Mr. Kerger. You see, I have something that you desire very badly. The only thing I ever wanted from you was that scroll you brought from the Gobi Desert, and I've got that. I'm so sorry to disillusion you, but uh, the scroll that I permitted uh, poor Mr. Schneider to take from my room was only an imitation. Done by a modern and not too expert artist. You're lying. This is one time you won't talk your way out. If you shoot me, we shall both regret it, I assure you. Since the decision lies entirely with you, at least do both of us the favor of uh, examining uh, this scroll here through a magnifying glass. Don't believe him. This is just another one of his tricks. If it is, it'll be his last. Even an untrained eye would detect these uh, artificially frayed edges. Not to mention the fact that the original scroll has an entirely different design, which shows the exact location of the tomb itself. Where is the real scroll? Oh, do you think I'm so foolish as to tell you? The Mongolian you sent to kill me in the desert was sufficient warning that my scroll was in danger. I managed to deposit it in a place of uh, comparative safety. It wouldn't have been of much use to you if I'd pulled this trigger when you entered here. Now, exactly what do you want? I would hardly have gone to such trouble to reach you if I had believed you reward me with a bullet. You understand, my scroll is useless without yours, but likewise, your set has no value without mine. I should imagine a treasure of Genghis Khan is sufficient for all of us. Why should we share with you? You haven't even got the scroll with you. But I possess a most remarkable memory. May I borrow this uh, chart for a moment? I can reproduce the drawing exactly as it appears on the original scroll. What if we don't agree? I'm afraid you must agree. You see, your scrolls direct you only as far as the edge of the Gobi Desert. Oh, and the Gobi Desert is so vast. One could so easily wander around endlessly without finding a trace of the tomb. Unless uh, one knew the exact direction. Oh, you are disappointed? I was only amusing myself a little. However, I shall be happy to make a copy of the scroll, should we reach an understanding. Can't you see what he's doing? He's stalling for time. Nelson told you he'd notified the police. You're a fool to trust him. But my dear Madame Chernoff, it is always unwise to trust anyone. Even a lady of your suspicious nature can sometimes be deceived. What do you mean? I have no interest, of course, in Mr. Kerger's uh, sentimental attachments. But is it not strange that he should insist on encumbering your journey with, uh, Miss Joyce? Eric, aren't you going to deny it? I brought her because she might prove useful if we have followed too closely. You should know that. I realize, of course, Herr Kerger, that you did not wish to disillusion Madame Chernoff until you had gained possession of the scroll her husband bought from Pereira. Eric, is this true? Of course it's true. I'm sorry, darling. I tried to go through with my part, but Mr. Moto spoiled everything. You see? What are you talking about where you're crazy? You might as well untie me now. Say, what is all this? Couldn't you see through it, Tom, the way I was using you to fool Madame Chernoff? So it's true. You didn't want me. It was only the scroll you were after you're all the time. You're Keep quiet. You lied to me, making me believe you loved Stop me. Stop it, will you? You can't shut me up. You made a fool of me long enough. Stop it.
dear Madame Chernoff, I'm so grateful for your suspicious nature. It is not the first time a woman's jealousy has been fatal to the man she loved. I do not think it will be necessary to find Madame Chernoff. The police will meet us at Ling To. And until then, escape would be impossible. You almost believed me, didn't you? Oh, no, of course I... Yes, I did. <laughs> well, everything's all right now. Mr. Morrow, stop! Don't burn them! It is with extreme regret that I destroy these rare objects of art. But already these scrolls have caused trouble enough. But they're priceless. My father will pay well for them for his collection. He doesn't know anything about the treasure. No one will ever know their real significance. I do not doubt your sincerity, Miss Joyce. But as long as these scrolls remain, there'll be a constant temptation to unscrupulous persons. I must keep a promise I made. Well, there goes ten million dollars up in smoke. He's right, Tom. Namu Ami Tabu. Now my friend can face his ancestors without shame. Hello again. Now, it sure was nice to see Peter Lorre in lead roles. You know, this was something of a treat. Now, the Mr. Moto films, they were fairly popular when they were released. But by the very late 1930s, international events were starting to cast a very large shadow on the franchise. You know, by then, Japan was becoming much more militaristic and imperialistic. They had recently invaded Manchuria in China. The growing tensions with the U.S. You know, things were not looking good there. And so 20th Century Fox decided that trying to continue a franchise with a Japanese agent detective hero it just wasn't boding well anymore. So, in 1939, they made the decision to end the franchise after eight films. But, technically, in 1965, there technically was a ninth film. The character was resurrected for one last film but the last one was produced by Lippert Pictures, and it was titled The Return of Mr. Moto. They had cast Henry Silva as the lead role. It was very low budget, and it was not well received. Now, remember, if you like old pictures like this, click on the subscribe button You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just click on the Full Moon Matinee icon. Or just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar and you can find all of the prior releases. And as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.